I am not naked. I promise you, I'm wearing a white dress. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing one of my most recent highly requested videos, my wedding makeup tutorial. <laughs> most of you know by now, but yes, uh, I did um, say my vows this weekend. And of course, one of the most important parts to me of this wedding was what makeup I wore. If you don't know, I'm actually a bridal makeup artist. I haven't done much work this year. I think I'm had like one wedding this year and a couple towards the end of this year because you know but I'm so excited to get back into bridal makeup this up and coming year but anyways it was fun for me to decide what makeup I wanted to use to get into kind of the ins and outs of the wedding how this happened why this happened why I didn't tell you guys I'm a very private person like it's not even just an internet thing literally in general I'm very private I don't tell my family my friends anything until after it happens if they're lucky so the fact that I didn't tell you guys don't take it personal I'm weird about big news I don't know I'm just I'm very private obviously this is a pretty big deal so I did tell you <laughs> I got married so, I mean, this would probably be the most personal video I've ever done on my channel. I'm not really into talking about me. I like talking about makeup, not really about me. But first, let me tell you the vibe that I was going for. This video is going to be like an hour long, so pause this and get a snack. But anyways, the vibe that I was going for since I had a flower headband, not this one. I will link the one that I got. I purchased it from an Etsy shop down below, but it had like peachy pink flowers on it and obviously my hair wasn't like this I had it curled in loose curls and then I put a flower headband along the back of my head I didn't want to put it like over I felt like that would emphasize my larger forehead so I wanted it back I like my hair covering my face and just the tones of the flower in my wedding were like pinky peachy so I knew I wanted to go for a blushing bride kind of look so these are the exact products that I use I didn't take any of these products out of my makeup bags since the wedding day so that literally you got the legit products so I used a little bit of the Smashbox photo finish primerizer I forgot to put on sunscreen you guys I mean normally it's not really recommended for your wedding day for flashback purposes but you can put on a little bit of SPF you know and it was sunny I forgot but whatever I didn't get sunburned so <laughs> one day it was just one day it was my wedding day it's okay but I liked this because it basically is a moisturizer for me it's so lightweight so I put on two primers this was the first one that I put on and then for something a little bit more smoothing a little bit more pore filling also moisturizing I really love the Tatcha the liquid soak canvas I really do feel like that this smooths out my face so I decided to go for this but I did film a wedding vlog but it was the worst vlog ever because I don't vlog I've never vlogged before I feel like people don't care about my life nor do I really care to share my life uh, because of you know that private thing that I have a problem with I did vlog but it's such an awkward vlog because I did like the day before the wedding like the morning of everything before the wedding and then obviously I was getting married so I forgot to bring my vlog camera and so it stops at me showing you my makeup like okay I'm almost ready and then the next footage is like okay I just got married it's like five hours later uh, so it's weird I don't know if I'll end up posting it Jose that's my husband he's editing it for me he's an amazing video editor he's never edited my videos before but I gave that for him to edit because it's so poorly filmed so I don't know if I'll end up uploading that because it's just awkward going from before right before the wedding and then straight okay we got married uh, but I'll see what he does with it as far as editing and then I don't know I just want to have it anyways just for me and him to look back on even if we missed the wedding part. Uh, by the way, the foundation I went with is the Dior Air Flash Spray Foundation. This is my all-time favorite foundation, you guys. I just spray it directly on the sponge and then put it on. I just think this is so skin-like and it lasts a really long time. And even if you're hot and sweaty, like the way that it fades because you're hot and sweaty, it still looks really good. So even if it's not like gonna last you 24 hours, when it fades away, it at least is not going to look cakey and gross. So I love this 
for events, for photography. It's stupid expensive, which is why I only use it for special occasions, but it's my all-time favorite foundation. I knew for years, like before I even got married, that this was going to be the foundation that I get married in because it's super amazing. If you don't know, Jose actually, he's from Spain. His family all lives in Spain, so obviously none of his family could come to this, which is really sad. So we are planning a couple years down the road. We do want to have a celebration in Spain, and I don't think we're going to do it like a whole big wedding part two, but it's going to almost be like the reception. So we had the ceremony in America and then we're going to have the reception in Spain just to celebrate a couple years later. So I'm really excited about that so his family could be there. They did get to see through video chat and everything, but language barrier and not having perfect wi-fi it's just it's not the same you know so the next thing i did was i used my pat mcgrath concealers in shade lm12 and m17 to spot conceal because i i do have a little bit here i don't really have that much acne nowadays but i did want like some coverage on my cheeks and then i had a little bit of a breakout somewhere on my face on my wedding day please ignore the fact that that concealer I put on was way too dark I accidentally put on the wrong shade but honestly sometimes when you use a little bit of a darker shade that covers a little bit better especially since I was putting blush on top so that's why I was really unbothered by it but yes, I do realize it's too dark. I used Pat McGrath to save the day. The engagement, where, when did that happen? Because I certainly didn't tell any of you guys about that. Oh, this is not the right color. We did not have a very long engagement period, you guys. We <laughs> had like a month and a half engagement period. And I know that sounds crazy, but just with all of the uncertainties in the world, and if things would close down or whatever, we just kind of wanted to get married right away. And we knew anyways, we're gonna split it between Spain and America. Since all of the cancellations happened, like everything we wanted, the venue, the photographer, just everything, everyone was available. So as far as getting what we needed, it was so easy, which is a struggle for weddings is getting the vendors and everything you want without having to book a year or two in advance. It just worked out perfectly. It was so easy. It gave me a reason to have a really small ceremony because you guys, I'm like a really, I don't like being the center of attention. I don't like making a big deal out of things so it was just perfect for me to have a small wedding and I still will get that bigger experience in Spain because Jose has a bigger family than I do. Not only that, Jose and I have been in a long distance relationship for over two years. With the whole COVID quarantine situation, it was the first time in our relationship that we were together for more than like a week at a time. So it was almost a test of our relationship really, just making it like an actual relationship, you guys. And I mean, obviously, it went very well and we really kind of solidified that this is the person that you know we want to be with i did not do my eyebrows this bad on my wedding day <laughs> my eyebrows look way better but i think me talking and doing makeup at the same time is making me a little bit more lackadaisical but i'm using my sigma tint and tame brow gel to set my eyebrows in place yeah so for those of you who don't know jose is actually here like on a student visa because he does live in spain you do have to start the immigration process, a change of status, and I'm using my Pat McGrath concealer, the Skin Fetish Concealer in LM9 as my under eye concealer, the best concealer in the world. I was toggling between this one and Too Faced Born This Way. I brought both, but I just ended up going with the Pat McGrath. They're both equally as amazing. But yeah, so we're starting the immigration process. We're gonna do a change of status. So if any of you guys have any advice, on that, I will gladly accept it because it's a whole new world, a whole new level of responsibility to get that figured out. So he is still in school. I know some of you had questions like about the living situation. Right now, so romantic. We don't currently live together, but he does graduate in November. So then we will live with each other once he's done and we can put an end to long distance. Thank goodness. I'm taking a Refer P21 brush and I'm going to get just a little bit of concealer on the brush and I'm going to clean up underneath my brows. I definitely don't do this every day, but for a wedding, I figured... I would clean it up and make it look a little bit sharper and cleaner because I have not gotten my brows done, you guys, since January. I've been doing a very good job, I think, of 
keeping up with them. They're not as perfect and crisp looking as my brow lady keeps them, but for at home, I'm not mad at it. And for setting my under eyes, I have my La Mer the Powder. This is super old, at least five years old. I did change the formulation. This is not the new formulation. And you guys did ask me what the difference or if there was a difference. There definitely is. I feel like the new one has a little bit of a slight sparkle to it. I don't know. It's just not as flat as the old one. So this is my all-time favorite powder and obviously it's the last I will ever have of it. So I saved it for my wedding day. So I'm gonna use that to lightly set underneath my eyes. I didn't do any heavy packing of the powder, just lightly pressing it in. I thought about if I wanted to bake or not because that really kind of sets everything in place, but a little goes a long way with powder as well. But yeah, that's like all of the juicy details of like the engagement, our relationship. Really just we figured out in COVID that we wanted to be with each other forever and we wanted just to like make something positive out of a bad time and because it was very easy to book everything that we wanted we just did it and the wedding was super small we only had 14 guests it was all immediate family except for my college roommate came because she lived near the area so I was like why not I'm using my sweetheart's bronzer from Too Faced in Sweet Tea I love this bronzer it has a little bit of glow to it it's nice and neutral it's not too warm not too cool and ugh, it looks like airbrushed into the skin. I was toggling between a number of bronzers, but this one is just a tried and true, so I had to use this. For those in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, I'll put everything with my photographer and the venue that I went to, but it was so beautiful, you guys. If you're having a very small, intimate wedding, I do recommend the place that I got married at because it just was the perfect size. It didn't look like I had a really small wedding. You know, I was afraid of a venue being too big for the amount of people that I had and there's just this perfect little terrace uh, at the resort that I got married at and it was just the perfect size and made everything feel very comfortable and intimate. There was a little bit of drama because it had been storming for like the past 30 hours and the weather had been saying it was going to rain all day. There was no way and I had kind of accepted the fact that we were going to get married indoors. We had everything set up indoors and I went up to get ready literally 30 minutes before the ceremony I was I texted my mother she did everything you guys she planned the wedding she set everything up she's amazing and I was like please can we have it outside because that's why we chose the venue you know it was so beautiful that's what we paid for so I was heartbroken that we couldn't have it outside but 30 minutes before the sun miraculously came out it was beautiful it was sunny and we were able to move everything outdoors and it was sunny for the rest of the day like I feel so lucky I don't know how it happened but I feel like the sun came out for me because it didn't look like that was gonna happen. The winning eyeshadow, tell it that one. I was toggling between a few, you know, my classic soft glam, and I was thinking maybe even Norvina because I wanted to do a more pinky look, and then Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk or exaggerize, and I kind of figured I wanted Charlotte Tilbury because I just love the look that her eyeshadow formula gives on the eyes, and it's so simple and so bridal, and surprisingly, I ended up going with the Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk, the big palette and in a million years I didn't think this would be my wedding palette because I just feel like you look at this and you think it's too bright too deep but no this ended up being what I wore let me get a little bit closer yeah I stayed mostly in these two parts and it was just the perfect color to match everything now this palette has so much sentimental value such a big deal what makeup I decided to use. So I mixed these two shades from the day and the desk and these are my crease colors. Like I said, it was a pinky peachy vibe. So literally straight up using a pinky peachy shade in the crease. And I really wanted it to be very blown out. I'm using BK201 brush from Brit's brush set. You know, they do say nothing runs super smooth before a wedding. Wednesday, I got married on Saturday, but Wednesday, I went to go at Jose for the wedding, obviously, and he was having like COVID symptoms <laughs> and he's living at his college. So I was like, we're going to have to cancel the wedding. And he went to the hospital to get tested. And I felt so much better because it 
did come back negative. But then when I go to pick him up, he's in bed with like a 104 fever. He did have pharyngitis, so there was uh, bacteria in his throat, and I really thought we were gonna have to cancel the wedding because there was no way, like he, you know, he had the chills. He had a 104 fever. He was not able to function. I was like, he's gonna be too sick. There's no way. Also, if he wasn't gonna be sick by the time that we had the wedding, I was gonna be sick from him giving that to me. I guess the antibiotics really did work though because the next day all was good, he felt better. I had until 9 a.m. Thursday morning to decide if we were gonna have to postpone because Jose was sick and thank goodness we didn't have to. So that's like, I was, I felt like my world was ending. <laughs> and not to be dramatic, but you know, when you have such a big event and your soon to be husband is super sick around the times of COVID and then it rains all day, I was just kind of sad. I was happy to be getting married but not about the situation but in the end something happened and literally everything worked out perfect to add a little bit more depth i used a bk202 i took this darkest shade from the desk palette and then i would mix in just a bit of this little bit of deeper brown for some depth and when i say a little bit of that deeper brown i mean like barely touching it because i didn't want too much depth in this look. I wanted it to be like a bright eye pinky look. So the dress that I wore is only $175. I'm pretty proud of that because I'd always imagined myself spending thousands of dollars on a wedding dress because <laughs> that's just the way I am. I like nice things. I wanted the full bridal treatment but I ended up ordering a dress online from Azos and it it was perfect. The only thing that needed altered was the straps and the length because I'm only like 4'11". And it just fits so good and it did not look like it was $175. So I do recommend if you're looking not to break the bank, Azos has a nice bridal section. I am looking to get a fancier dress for our Spain celebration, but kind of shocked at what Azos had to offer. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak peek at the blush that I used, which was the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in Luminous Flush. I just took a touch of the blush that I knew I was gonna be using. And I used it to kind of pinkify the look and so that the blush and the eyes would really come together. Remember, in photos, it takes out like 30-40% of the makeup that you're wearing, so don't be afraid. Don't get scared. And then the next thing that I did was I mixed these two shades from the day section and this was my lid color. I wanted that perfect in between of those two shades, something to really brighten up my eye and I just used my finger and I spread it all over to give me that Charlotte Tilbury bridal ethereal kind of glow. I'm trying to think if there's anything else notable about what I wore, just that Azo dress, which I was very impressed with. I will link it down below if you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna wear the same dress that I did and then the flower headband from Etsy. And I think I borrowed everything else, but those were the two main things. And then I took the lightest shade and then I took some MAC Fix Plus, kind of dampened my finger just a little bit, like hardly. And then I just put it again everywhere to brighten up the whole eye. Just a touch of the wetness gives it a little bit more of a glow. And then I took some of Dream right here. I mixed this shade and then this brownie shade. I did a lot of mixing, kind of concocted my own colors. And I put this brown red berry shade just along my lower lash line to define my eyes. And this looks so pretty to define the eyes. It gives a nice pink punch to the look, but when you have liner and lashes and all of that, it really defines the eye beautifully. So you can really define the eye and get a little bit of smokiness without using black. I know I look a bit crazy and colorful. It'll pull together, you'll see. And then now we're gonna go back to the blush. I used a refer number four brush and I just wanted a really bright, pinky, glowy cheek. So Hourglass was easily the way to go. This is my favorite blush ever, you guys. It's the best formula and I love a pink cheek. And I'm taking it and making sure it kind of blends into the shadow. Again, I really wanted that blushing a bride kind of look. I will say, looking at this, I think I did go a little bit more deeper in the eyes today than I did on my wedding day. I didn't mix so much of those dark colors on my eye, but I mean, 
you get the gist. And then for highlight, I brought my Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette in Glitz. This is, again, one of my all-time favorite highlighters. I do wish, though, I would have gone more in the direction of, like, Max Soft and Gentle, something a little bit softer, because this is quite blingy. I use this shade right here. So if I could go back, I would pick a different highlighter, because I do love this, but it's not, like, super natural, glowy from within that I wanted. Keep in mind, guys, like, I have a whole bridal makeup kit, but that's for use on other people. I have good bridal stuff in that. Uh, this one, I just dug through my own personal makeup collection, and though I love this highlighter, I put it on, and I was like, okay, maybe not exactly the direction I was going for, but it's still gorgeous. So that's the highlighter that I use. You'll definitely be able to see in my wedding photos that my makeup was softer on the eyes, but this is still super gorgeous. I sprayed Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish setting spray. I feel like this really does make my makeup last longer. And it smells so delightful. And I use my tried and true MAC Black Drag Fluid Line. This is my favorite eyeliner of all time with the MAC 210 brush because it's super tiny and I created a miniature wing just because I feel like that's what complements my eye shape the best. So I'm gonna quietly do this. I think my wings were a little bit smaller, but apparently we're going more dramatic today. And I used my Pat McGrath Labs Perma Gel Eyeliner and I used it just to tightline the upper lash line. So this helps with the lashes to look thicker. This is my best look, no? and more delicious. Uh, and then, because I wanted a more bright eye, I actually used a skin tone eyeliner in my waterline. So I used the Milk Makeup Long Gel Pencil in BCC. I love doing this on brides. I just feel like it really brightens up their eyes. If you are a bride and have smaller eyes, I really recommend doing this because in photos, you just look so much more awake. I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I made a rookie mistake as a bridal makeup artist. I made two. And one of them was I did not have waterproof mascara. I used the Lanco Monster Big Little Mascara Sample because I ran out of all my good mascaras. So I was risky. I used a new mascara and it's not waterproof. And there was a bit of a mishap with some tears. So that's all I'm gonna say. And like I said, I didn't have my bridal makeup kit. So I didn't have everything that I always am prepared for. And then I also didn't bring a liquid liner and that ties into the eyelashes because I have hooded eyes so shadow transfers and you need black liquid liner after you put the lashes on to keep that lash line super black so in my photos you can see that I didn't have black eyeliner to trace over my lashes and I just simply forgot to pack it so when I was doing my makeup I was like so I'm now gonna edit my photos to make my lash line look black anyways let me put this on <laughs> okay so as far as falsies, that was another big debate for me. I ended up going with Lily Lashes in Makeup by Samuel. So unfortunately, these aren't sold anymore. This is my last one in my collection. This is my all-time favorite lash. I just feel like it's not too dramatic because I do have smaller eyes. You know, I'm a lash girl. I knew I needed some bold lashes for my wedding. It just wouldn't feel right to me if I didn't have that. But I do have smaller eyes, so I always need that kind of perfect in between. And I feel like these are dramatic enough while still being appropriate for bridal. I'm gonna search high and low to see if these are still available, but I don't even know if I'll tell you guys because I need to buy them all because I just love these lashes. I played around with a few other lash styles. I almost ended up going with the wedding lash from Lily Lashes just because it felt right, obviously. But I just felt like the Makeup by Samuel opened up my smaller eyes a little bit more. And again, like I said, if I had packed correctly, I would go over with some black liquid liner to really seal everything and make everything really black. But I wasn't smart enough to pack that. Everything's looking very, very nice. So so now let's move on. But do you see how beautiful these lashes are? I love them. They're my favorite and they look so good in photography. So last thing is lips. Definitely knew what I wanted to wear. So I used the Pat McGrath Labs Lip Pencil in Bare Rose. One for formula because this lasts forever and two because it's the most perfect lip color. And then for lipstick, I used Charlotte Tilbury Super Cindy. In hindsight, 
I probably should have done a liquid lipstick and I knew I should have, but I just, I hate the look of dry liquid lipstick lips. I would rather have a lipstick wear off as opposed to a liquid lipstick because at least with a color like this in lipstick form, you look okay not wearing lipstick in like your wedding photos, if that makes sense. Super Cindy has a little bit more of a peachy undertone to it compared to Bare Rose Lip Liner, which ties everything together. And then I did put on a little bit of gloss, not too much, but I used some of Fenty Fossey, like right here. And boom, this is my wedding makeup. Those are all of the products that I used. I feel like it looked a little bit better on my wedding day, but it still looks really pretty. I just love the blushing pink look for a wedding and it matched the flowers and with my hair done and then the crap flower crown and the soft feminine dress, it looks so good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about my wedding and my relationship. And this video was super highly requested and I was really excited to do it because this is a video that I'm gonna look back on when I want to remember what products I wore for my wedding day. So that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one.